Welcome back to day two. Today we're going to tackle decluttering, which is the hardest thing for most people, and it's the main reason for feeling overwhelmed. But first, let's review a few thoughts from yesterday. We talked about how we should rethink downsizing, not as a move down in any sense, but rather your right sizing, moving forward to the right place for you at the right time in your life. And I suggested a first step as a way to think about the process of right sizing to crystallize your thoughts by making a list of concerns or fears in column one and the solutions in another column. Thinking deeply about each thing that worries you and finding an answer to it. And be clear that it takes time. Time is our most precious commodity and everything takes time, so don't rush it. You don't need more stress. And we also discuss the power of memories that stay with us when we move. And most importantly, we discuss that this is a journey. It's not a sprint to the finish line. Moving toward the right place for you now is a process that runs through a gamut of emotions that takes time and energy. And everyone moves at their own pace. So I want to do decluttering. The other day I visited Martha, whose husband passed away years ago, and she was living by herself now. I could see the house was too much for her with so much stuff all over the place, and you could hardly find a place to sit. And it wasn't as clean as it probably should have been. But she didn't want to leave because she lived there so long. Her kids grew up there, and she didn't know where she would be able to move. All the reasons so many of us think about, but they're really just crutches. Reasons in our mind why we stay put. And the longer we feel that way, the harder it gets. They're crutches, so she doesn't have to make the difficult decision. Martha was clearly overwhelmed. And the reality is, if she were to think about right-sizing as we've discussed, she would decide it's time. She's held off long enough, and she would begin to declutter and think about moving to a newer, less cluttered life. You know, when you ask people why they haven't downsized, overwhelmed is the number one response. And all the stuff in the house, the clutter, is a main reason for that. A cluttered home causes a cluttered mind, so we need to clear that space, right? To declutter your home will take time. There's no doubt about it. It's emotionally and physically draining, so you probably should go slow. Take it one step at a time. Of course, some people might be super motivated and get the house empty and ready to sell in a couple months, but others might need a couple years. Again, everyone needs to go at their own pace. There's a delicate balance between your logical side, which are we thinking is the right thing, and your emotional side, which is thinking, should I? So the main obstacles uh, become financial, like if I sell, can, what can I afford? Or time, which is our most precious quantity, I'm too busy to deal with it now. Or misinformation, what's available to me now? And what will others think? Am I really too old? Sometimes there's a crisis, maybe health or financial issues, so it becomes a need-based move. But otherwise, the main problem to overcome is inertia or procrastination. So the first thing we need to do after making the decision to move is to think about what we do with all the stuff in our house. As I said yesterday, everyone has their own story, and this is mine. Maybe some parts will ring true, but I want to show you our thought process, and maybe it'll help you. It took us two years, that's two years, from deciding to sell our home to finally moving into a new one. And we couldn't be happier now, but those were two long years. What we did after telling our kids that we decided to move was to have them go through the house and put a sticky note on anything they wanted. And they could take it or we would put it aside until they were, we were ready to sell. And as it turned out, there really wasn't very much that they wanted. So it didn't help a whole lot in decluttering, but it really does go a long way in beginning to filter out what to keep. So then I decided to start with the storage closet, closet in the basement where we kept those old crutches, some old skis, and roller skates, and a bunch of other stuff, and a bunch of big boxes. I figured it was the best place to start since it wouldn't disrupt our lives and no one went there much anyway. And I found those boxes contained old tax returns from as far as 1980. Thinking, what the hell? I've been schlepping those from house to house for 40 years? Why? I don't know. I just did. Does that ring a bell? So I had to attack those old returns and believe me, it took me months sitting on the floor, shredding them until the shredder broke, then ripping them up and throwing the trash back in the boxes. But it took so long because it was tedious and it was easy to say I'm bored. I'll get around to it another day. But finally, when that was finished, I took the boxes to the dump and I put everything else back in the closet. Why? 
because I just wasn't ready to get rid of those old things. But the good thing is, at least, it gave us permission to move on to another room to clean out. We started with my daughter's room, one piece of furniture at a time. And it wasn't so hard clearing out old clothes stuck in a cabinet for 20 years. But it is the things, the objects, that were a lot harder. And this is where we all get stuck. Little things like a miniature cat statue I gave her for some birthday that she kept on a shelf, or pictures on her desk, or medals from soccer. All this stuff that she didn't want, or she would have taken it. But it all brought back memories for us. But into the box of trash, they went. We have memories. We don't need those things. I can go on and on, but I want you to see that downsizing can take a long time. It was so easy to procrastinate because I didn't do it every day. Consistent action, that's the hardest part. Decluttering is really hardest at the beginning. I know it's hard to believe now, but it does get easier. You probably feel stuck at certain times, maybe even trapped and angry, and that's normal. But you need to declutter your mind and understand your emotions first. Then think about decluttering your stuff. So my first tip is to start small. The most common failing is trying to do too much too soon. You might start with one piece of furniture or one drawer or a closet, but don't pressure yourself to do it all now. So I suggest you start with no more than two hours at a time. It gets mentally exhausting after that. We're always thinking about what to keep and what to get rid of. Bottom line is you should keep what you love. The things that absolutely mean the most to you, not what you like, but the items that you love the most. If you have family members that you think might want some of the things that have sentimental value, ask them. If they definitely want something but aren't quite ready to take it, it's okay, put it aside for now. But I stress for now. They'll need a final call when you're getting closer to finish or else you're gonna get rid of it. This is not a threat, it's a promise to yourself. You're almost done and you don't need more stuff in the way so they can come and get it or it's out of there. And please do not let anyone tell you what you should keep. If your family says maybe you should keep it, maybe isn't a yes. So that means get rid of it. It's not meaningful enough to anyone. Sorting through things is an emotional roller coaster. So you need to be emotionally and mentally ready. But after you've done it, your life will change, I promise. It requires a mind shift from looking past to looking forward. So there are three basic steps to right sizing. The first is, as I said, emotional readiness. Do you feel ready to do this? Step two is identifying what is essential, the things that really, really mean the most to you, and eliminating the rest. And step three is having a logical plan where you go day by day, or every other day, or twice a week, or whatever works to make you stick with the plan. You might want to write this down if it helps, but do what it takes to move forward. It might take a long time, but remember, consistency is more important than speed. I know decluttering is hard, so here are a few more tips that should make it easier. First, pick your favorite items first, the things you can't live without, rather than what you don't want. Pick the things that you love. Second, when you're thinking about those sentimental items, don't feel obligated to keep them, especially if they've been handed down. Take a picture instead. I have a friend whose grandfather passed down his collection of old tool tools. This had real sentimental value to her, but she knew she couldn't use them and had no place for them and could hopefully give them to her relatives or donate to museum. So, so she took pictures of everything and made a photo album, which I think is a pretty awesome idea. So the most important thing, the memories of her grandfather and what he had given her will stay with her forever while the tools go somewhere else, not with her. Third, release the need to know who things will go to. Too many times, People get stuck thinking about who gets what, and if someone will feel cheated because they didn't get it. You can send word out to whomever is important to you and send them pictures of the items you think will be of value and tell them to let you know what they want. When my mother passed away, I took pictures of all her paintings, crystal bowls, and various tchotchkes, and emailed, them, emailed the grandkids to see what they were interested in. Well, it wasn't very much. A few paintings and a clock was all about it. I'm glad we didn't stress over who gets what. Fourth, give yourself a deadline, not for everything at once, but in small bites, like one space at a time. It might only be an hour a day in a, or a drawer in a bedroom, or it might be a closet. Think about what that little piece will be like when it's finished. What's most important 
whether you're making yourself do this on a consistent basis. I promise you'll feel like it's a great achievement after the first time you meet your deadline. And don't feel like you have to do it all yourself. If you have things too heavy or bulky to move, maybe just big boxes that are inaccessible. Hire a kid in the neighborhood or ask friends and family if they know anyone who can help. You can hire a professional organizer if you need help getting started. And junk removal companies to take away the piles of stuff you're getting rid of. There are all kinds of help available if you need it. So don't be stressed out by feeling you are on your own or that you have to do everything by yourself. So I know I'm giving you lots to think about, but I just can't stop. So here are a few more methods to help you think about downsizing that might work for you. There's the day one, the one a day method, which means let go of one item per day. That's pretty self-explanatory. There's the four box method, which is a way to organize the stuff to get rid of, which is keep, donate, trash, recycle, or sell. That's keep, donate, trash, recycle, or sell. And there's a closet hanger method. Someone told me about this one. Face all your closet hooks away from you. And once you wear an item, turn the hanger toward you. After six months, donate the clothes they're still facing away. Well, this might work for some of you, but I wouldn't have any clothes left. Okay, last ones. Here are a couple more tips that I think will be helpful. Do not declutter anyone else's things. You never know what's important to them. And don't let family guilt you into something to keep or get rid of. It's too much strife to have someone else go through everything. You need to do it by yourself. Sometimes you need a neutral party or a professional organizer to bypass a to involve family. So think about this. Slow down to choose what's right for you. Decluttering is not about getting rid of stuff. It's about what to keep in your life. Clutter adds no value in your life. As a matter of fact, it diminishes it. So take your time to think about what you love enough to keep. Then take the small steps to clear out the space that will build your confidence. Cherish the memories as you soar through things. Those will always go with you. It's the stuff you've accumulated and the baggage you've carried around for so long that you'll get rid of. So tomorrow, we'll follow up from deciding to right size to decluttering and then wrap it up with getting your home ready to sell while looking for your new home and moving to an awesome new place in your life. And I hope to see you there.